The final match of the T20 series between India and Australia didn't necessarily reach the heights of the previous game. It did, however, show that Australia have wonderful depth from a batting perspective, their bowling department, and also now leadership. For India, unfortunately, they probably put their worst performance on the field, but certainly so many lessons can be taken. Time to review the last game and the series here on Crick Buzz. There has been a consistent theme in this series. India win the toss and they elect to bowl. And they would have been happy that they had Australia 67 for four, just under the 10 over mark. But what that did do is brought Grace Harris and Ashley Gardner together. And their partnership together was amazing. They were able to go straight away from ball one and they were able to put on 129 runs of the last 62 balls. What that meant was that Australia was able still to post 196 for four, their highest total so far in this series. For India and their bowlers, they made a change to their 11. They dropped Jamima Rodriguez, they brought in another bowler, but with seven bowlers used, it still wasn't pretty looking. The fact that they haven't been able to nail their lengths and they looks like they really are struggling for Puja Vastrika and potentially another senior seam bowler. In reply, India needed to get off to a good start, but they just kept losing wickets. And apart from a couple of bright innings of Harleen Diol and uh, Dipti Sharma at the end, India stuttered their way to be all bowled out by the final delivery for 142. My top three picks for this match has to be Grace Harris at the top. She has played her role to perfection in this series. She is a clean striker. And when someone is striking it at, at 182, she finished with 64 off 35, her first half century for Australia. No doubt it won't be the last. And she's gonna be hot property for all of the franchise tournaments moving forward. I definitely would have her in a side if I was coaching. Dipti Sharma, boy, she just keeps putting her hand up. She bowls the tough overs, doesn't she? She bowls in the power play, she bowls at the death. She changed her tactics today from a bowling point of view, didn't necessarily work, but she was still able to deceive Phoebe Litchfield, who batted for the first time uh, in Australian colors with this wonderful flight and spin. Uh, and then she was really the lone soldier with the bat in hand. She finished 53 of 34 deliveries. My third pick, well, it's the hat-trick queen. Well, we'll call her that, Heather Graham. Figures of four for eight, can you believe it? I mean, it's only the second time an Australian female has picked up a hat-trick and both times it's been at Brabourne Stadium. Megan Shute, the previous one, she wasn't in the side today. Heather Graham just picked up where she left off. Player of the match for the second time in a row, I'm giving it to Ashley Gardner. Boy, she has certainly matured and developed over the years and is now a real important cog to this Australian team. She was able to come in and, and have that wonderful partnership with Grace Harris, 66 off 32. Her strike rate, can you believe it? 206. And then her bowling has been outstanding in India. She's been able to bowl into the pitch. She's been able to get good top spin, really drop the ball two for 20 off her four overs. Moment of the game. Well, I had an early moment, and this is maybe the Australian bias coming in, but to see Phoebe Litchfield drive the ball straight down the ground, that's good signs for her, good signs for Australia moving forward because I think she'll be part of the Australian team for a long period of time. But really, the moment was the hat trick, wasn't it? Like, how many times do we see players get themselves into that position of getting a hat trick? We had to wait a little bit of time until Talia McGrath gave the ball back to Heather Graham and she picked it up. Four for eight in the end, but uh, amazing opportunity for her. Impact performer, I'm giving it to Harleen Diol. Now this number three position has been a, a bit of a contentious one for the Indian side. They're, they're searching to find it. And whilst Jamima Rodriguez, her 2022 numbers are pretty good. Still, her numbers aren't great in India at that number three position. Yet Harleen Diol came in and her, her intent was perfect. The way that she moved around the crease, she swept Ash Gardner really well. Then knowing that Ash Gardner would toss it up, 
She used her feet, feet smartly and then hit a straight back over her head for six. That intent has to be rewarded. So I'd love to see Harleen Diol get a little bit more of an opportunity in that number three position moving forward. Take away from this series, two quality sides that certainly lift when they play against each other. But the amount of runs that we've seen in this series bodes for, for a couple of things. There's two changes that could potentially be made. Either go back to five fielders outside the inner circle after the power play, or increase the boundary size. I think we've got to kind of shift the balance slightly. Players, female players are getting a lot stronger. Um, the pitches were outstanding in Mumbai. And that what that means is it bodes well for high scores. But we don't want to see just the batters having fun. We want to see the bowlers every now and again enjoying conditions as well. Second takeaway, India really missed Puja Vastrika, didn't they? Um, her injury just leaves a hole and... I think for any young Indian female player, if you can be a seam bowler, can be clever with the ball, be able to bowl Yorkers, cutters, but bowl quick, you are gonna be an asset for the Indian side moving forward. But in the meantime, whilst that, while you are developing your skills, I think they probably need to bring back an experienced campaigner, someone like a Shikapande, um, who keeps turning up in domestic cricket and doing well, they could potentially bring her back in for the T20 World Cup. Just strengthens their side a little bit because you can't go in with that many spinners on good quality decks um, when there's not a lot of side spin and there's a decent amount of bounce, your spinners will go for runs. Third thing, the Aussies. Boy, they have some depth. I mean, the fact that you lose Elisa Healy, you can slot Phoebe Litchfield at the top. Yes, yeah, she didn't make an impact, but it doesn't disrupt the order too much. Grace Harris has found her feet uh, and they've taken the game to another level. Australia have always been strong and dominant in their top four, but now that you've got the finisher, Grace Harris um, and Ashley Gardner, it means that other teams now need to be thinking of scoring 180 regularly if they're gonna bat first, um, which is a tall order. So that firepower is a new formula that the Australians have figured out. Um, and then uh, Heather Graham comes in and she seems to do her job, Kim Garth as well. So the Australian side is, is looking good in the build up to the T20 World Cup. And my final takeaway is if you build it, they will come. I mean, we saw the peak audience at DY Patel at 45,000 people coming in and enjoying the cricket. And boy, they were treated to a wonderful game, a super over in fact but it just bodes well because this series all is almost treated like an appetizer to the women's IPL. I can't wait to fast forward to March when the women's IPL starts and we get to see the Indian talent on offer and the fans enjoying it. I hope you've enjoyed this series between India and Australia and also the coverage here on Crick Buzz.